autumn equinox, which is very, very exciting for yoga teachers and everyone. By the way, I'm wearing a skirt today, so that might give you a little bit of a hint about where we're going. So let's just come into a comfortable seated pose. And let's start with our eyes looking around, looking around the environment and just see, what, what do we see? So Carla's in a new place, she just moved, which is very exciting. So her space may be less familiar. So let's just take a look. <sighs> And now we're going to try a little game with our eyes. We're going to take our hand out to the, the corner of our, of our perspective. And let's start with our right, with our right hand coming out, checking to see where is the edge of our perception where we, the hand disappears, okay? So take it and then bring the finger all the way across and now look at the hand coming across and then let's go back. So moving slowly. So we're going to start bringing the breath in. So we're going to inhale open. Look, and don't move the nose. Try to keep the nose and trace the finger with the eyes. Exhaling across to the left, inhaling to the right. So we're just doing a little warm up of our eyes and noticing when does the eye, when does the finger disappear? Let's do one more inhaling to the right. Exhale to the left. And then let's take the other hand up. So to bring the right or the left hand out. So keeping our nose forward, find where you can just barely see the finger and then cross the body with it, looking at the hand, the, the finger as it moves. And now let's inhale to the left. Exhale to the right. Trying to not move the nose, it's actually very tricky. And stop when the, when the hand disappears and then trace it back. I keep finding myself cheating. Okay, now let's take the right hand again and keeping the nose straight ahead, don't look up or down, look up and Find where the bottom of your perception is. So lift it till you, till you see it and then trace it coming up, keeping the nose steady and then exhaling down, looking at the hand coming down, looking at your finger without moving your nose. So inhaling up, exhale down. So see if you can go as high without changing your head so where your finger starts disappearing okay let's take our left hand and do the same thing so coming up so we're just playing with our perception here our eyes all right let's just do one more Okay, so we've played with our eyes a little bit. Let's just close our eyes, set our hands down on our knees. Let's check in with our sense of hearing, listening to any sounds in the environment. Don't try to judge the sounds, just notice them and accept them. And then let's shift our attention to gravity. And we're going to test out gravity on our sits bones. So you can rock back and forth a little bit between the sits bones 
just noticing them. And by the way, if your legs get cramped, you can always take them out a little bit and shake them out. Always feel comfortable doing that. So let's play a little game with gravity. Let's press into our right sits bone and then let's make a little circle around the right sits bone. Doing a tiny little circle. And then let's reverse the circle. So it's, it's very small. It can be very, very little. And then let's come to center and notice the difference between the right sits bone and the left sits bone. And then let's come over to the left and do a little circle around the left sits bone, noticing the tissue. And then let's reverse it. All right, come to center. Notice the difference. Maybe one side was more tight than the other. And now we're going to make a figure eight. So let's start at the top of the right sits bone coming around and then come up the center and then come around the top of the left sits bone, coming around the back, coming up the center. So we're making a little figure eight around our sits bones. And just notice as you go around if one of them is a little stiffer or achier. And let's bring the breath in. So let's inhale whenever we're moving forward. Exhale when we move backwards. You can close your eyes. Now, once you come to the center again, let's reverse it. And it, that might just be so confusing if this was hard, <laughs> but just go ahead and do your best. Exhaling whenever you're going backwards, inhaling whenever you're coming forwards. All right, let's open our eyes. <sighs> And we're going to go ahead and look at our hands and let's zoom in. Let's do a little zoom in with our hands. So looking at our hands very closely, like we're looking at the bigger picture a moment ago. And then let's bring our hands to our heart center and let's set an attention for our practice today. How do you want to feel when you leave today? And let's open with an OM. So inhale. OM. Hmm. All right, beautiful. So we're going to come and lay down. And so we're going to be having some space overhead. So if your mat is next to a wall, you can go ahead and move yourself down. And you can use a blanket as a pillow if you would like. So we're just gonna come down and have our knees bent in the beginning. So go ahead and take your time. And whenever you get down, uh, we're gonna start off by checking our lumbar spine. So spines have beautiful curves in them and that, that's the way they should be. So taking our hands, reaching underneath into the little curve, go ahead and just check it and get settled. Settled here, looking, you can look at the ceiling. You get, once you've checked your lumbar spine and make sure there's enough space for a little mouse to crawl under, then we'll take our hands to our belly and just do some deep belly breathing, starting to wake up our lower belly. So let's do five deep breaths. All 
All right, let's do one more. Hmm. All right, so we're gonna do some hip rocks, um, starting with our knees. So let's sway our knees to the right, inhale, and then exhale, sway the knees to the left. And let's just start off with one inch going each direction. Now let's go two inches in each direction. And as you are doing this, I want you to feel like you are the riverbed and your, your feet, your knees, I should say, are seaweed. So really feel the water element as you sway back and forth. Let's go three inches to the right, three inches left, inhaling to the in, right and exhaling to the left. And have your hands in your belly so you can feel the breath coming into your lower belly. All right, next time you come over to the right, you can drop your knees just for a moment and then exhale them over to the left, dropping them. So just doing a little dynamic twist back and forth. We're still inhaling to the right, next to the left. And now next time you drop over to the right, I want you to push into your left foot, lifting the left hip one inch off the ground. Exhale down, flip over to the left side and push into the right foot, lifting one hip, the inch, the hip one inch. Inhale up and then exhale, drop the hip so we're just flipping back and forth, doing a little tiny bitty, a bitty tiny back bend. Inhale as you lift the hip, exhale as you drop it. We're just starting to warm up our sacrum. And as we do this, I want you to imagine that you are a little clam on the bottom of the ocean floor and the ocean waves are rolling over you. We're going to be thinking a lot about water today. All right, let's just do one more on each side. All right, let's stretch the legs out and just do a little mini Shavasana and feel our energy, how it's changed since we started. Maybe you can detect your heart rate has increased. All right, we're gonna do some leg warm ups. So um, with our legs straight, we're going to lift the right leg. You guys can just take a look at me for a second, whatever way makes, com makes it mo most comfortable for looking at me. So we're gonna lift the right leg straight up, pushing through the heel if it feels okay with your hamstring. The more you push through the heel, the more you are stretching and engaging the muscle in the back of the leg. Then we're gonna bring the knee in. We're gonna open the knee out to the right so I'm holding my right knee right now. I'm stretching out through my left hand. Then I'm gonna bring the knee in, and then I'm gonna drop the knee over to the left, bringing it into my left hand into a little twist, stretching through the right and looking. Okay, this is a little flow. And just take a look one more, there's one more thing. Once we come back to center, we're going to extend the leg straight up and push through the heel, lowering slowly. So there's nothing fast about any of this movement. It's all very slow and deliberate but I still want you to feel that it's a dance. Like this is a very fancy choreographed dance that you're all partaking, partaking in. So let's watch one more time. Lifting now the left leg, pushing through the heel, bringing the knee in, opening out to the left, stretching the right hand out, bring the knee in, and then bring the leg across, stretching through the left, 
and then bringing it in, lifting the leg straight up and then lowering slowly. All right, so that's the pattern. You can go ahead and start getting used to it. I'm gonna talk about the breath now. So the breath is when you're lifting the leg up, you're inhaling. When you exhale, you're bringing the knee in. Then you inhale, opening out to the side, or exhale, going out to the side, sorry. And then inhale, bringing the knee in, and exhale, crossing the body. Inhale the knee in, and then exhale, bringing the leg straight, and then exhale the leg down. So I'll go over the breath again on the other side if it was a little complicated. So inhale the left up, the leg up, exhale, bring the knee in, exhale out, inhale. Whenever the knee comes in, it's inhaling, exhale the knee out to, into the twist, inhale the knee in, exhale the leg up, and then bring the leg down. So mainly just keep moving. If you feel like you're a little bit lost, then just keep moving. It's like, it's like Zumba. You just keep moving if you get lost. The one thing you can remember is whenever you bring the knee in, you're inhaling. And try to move slow, like it's a beautiful dance. All right, let's do one more on each side. Feel graceful. Press through that heel for extra hard work on the back of the leg. Once you finish your last one, you can just rest, feel your heart beating, Whew. feel any change in your body. So if, there, if you ever do a movement that is challenging, it means you're working on your neuroplasticity because it's not a habitual movement it's something new so that's a really good sign all right we're going to flip over so take a look at me this is going to be something you've definitely never done before unless you took my class the other day and then you definitely did do it before so we're going to come into sleeping buddha which sleeping buddha is a straight line so you want a straight line between your leg and your hands okay so you're going to be completely straight and you guys can just take a look at me before you try this. You're completely straight and really check because a lot of times people end up in like a banana shape or like a zigzag. But what you want is a straight line between your fingertips and your heels. And once you get into that position, then we're going to bring our top leg, we're gonna bend it, and we're gonna bring the knee towards our face. We're keeping our bottom leg completely straight, it doesn't move at all. And then we're gonna take the leg behind us like we're kicking the wall behind us, okay? So how much you move is gonna be dependent on many factors. So it doesn't really matter how much of a movement, but we're balancing on the, our side body 
and moving the leg back and forth. So we'll inhale the knee towards our face and then exhale, kicking the wall behind us, trying to stay balanced. And if you think this is easy, wait till you try it. It's really, really hard. <laughs> so go ahead and once you uh, have figured out what it is, we're gonna go ahead and do this. So pretend like it's like almost like you're diving. Your hands are so straight and, a, uh, and yes, exactly above you and then bring the leg in keep that bottom leg completely straight and notice that you want to fall over as you kick the leg behind try to stay up so we're doing balancing act on our side body and if you fall over don't worry it's not very far and you're not going to get injured <laughs> so don't be afraid so we're inhaling the knee up and exhaling the knee behind. I'm gonna do it from the side, just so you can see if you're still wondering if you're doing it right. I think I need to move way further. So the leg is just kicking up and kicking behind. If you stop in the middle, that's okay too. You can just rest for a moment in the middle. And you're trying to keep the, knee, the knees pretty close together. So there's not, not like a huge gap. So sometimes I see students trying to bring their knee way up. But the, the leg is really close. All right, just do one more. Ah, oh, and then let's roll onto our back. Do another little mini Shavasana. Whew. And feel your heartbeat. Strangely, it's challenging thing to do. All right, we're going to roll over and do the other side. So I was just on my right side. So I don't know if you, I think everyone was just rolling whichever direction, you know, they could. So go ahead and come on to the other side and bring the other arm underneath your head. You can rest your head right on your shoulder or your bicep. Bring the top arm on top. And then let's go ahead and inhale the knee towards our face. And then exhale, kick behind you. And try not to fall over. Keep the, uh, the bottom leg straight. And see if this side is harder for you. This side is way harder for me. All right, let's just do one more. Mm. And then again, roll over onto your back. Do a little mini Shavasana, feel your heart beating. Notice anything that was interesting to you from that movement. we're gonna come up so come on up to sit and you can take a look at where we're going next how we're setting up so I'm gonna take my blanket into the middle of my mat and then I'm gonna bring my two blocks on to the front of my mat so I'm gonna be kneeling on the middle of my mat and then I'll just show you you can take your time to set up 
Um, I'm just gonna demonstrate where you're going so you can decide what you wanna do. We're gonna have one of our feet in front, our hands are on the blocks, and we're just gonna go back and forth doing a hamstring opener and then a psoas opener. So we're just gonna go back and forth and we'll open through the chest and we'll be inhaling forward, exhale back. So take your time to set up and I'm gonna fix the bumps in my blanket because my OCD-ness is bothering me. All right, let me see, is everyone set up? Okay, looks like everyone's ready. All right, so we're gonna inhale. Let's we'll start with our right foot forward. Let's inhale forward, looking up through the chest. So I'm doing it's almost like a cobra, looking up, stretching through the collarbones. And then we're gonna exhale, folding forward over the hamstring. You can even take your hand and do a little massage. And so move back and forth at your own pace if you decide you need to stay. Doing a psoas opener, you can even take your hand, tap it, rub it. Move at your own pace. I really like the tapping and massaging. They do a lot of that in Qigong. It's very nice. And as you move, really try to capture the grace of a dancer. All right, do one more in both directions. And then we're gonna bring this leg back. So I want you to move back with your muscle. So take your hands up and bring this right leg back with muscle. It may be a bit of a balancing act, but just try because that's gonna build strength in the hips. Okay, now that everyone's back, to both legs, let's tap out our psoas. So the psoas is the muscle right here in the front of our hips. All right, now we're gonna move the left foot up with no hands, okay? So just try, it's a balancing act here, bringing the left foot forward, and then we bring the hands out of the block, and let's try capturing that grace. Grace of a dancer, exhaling over the hamstring. And again, feel free to do taps if you want to. Give me a little massage, the psoas and the hamstring. Move at your own pace. Stretch through the collarbones whenever you come up to the top, looking up. Okay, let's do one more in each direction. All right, we're gonna come back. So we're gonna take this left leg back slowly. I wanna see everyone's hands. Everyone's hand, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Show me your hands. All right, great. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn to the side so we're facing the side, the long side of our mat. And we're gonna do a fun little gate to side plank variation. So I've scientifically figured out the best block for this. So one block is gonna be on the flat side um, on the right and the other block can be on the high side on the left, and they can be both on, this, on a line. So let me just show you the setup. So we're gonna take the left leg out, so the blade of the foot is parallel with the left side of our mat. We're completely straight. We're on a complete straight parallel uh, line with the, with the front edge of the long side of the mat. We're going to then take our hand, our right hand down, to the block on the side, 
bringing the left hand over. You guys are just watching. Left hand over. And then we're going to take the right hand over and the left hand will touch this block that's in front of the shin, okay? So the movement is very simple. We're just touching the right hand to the block that's in front of us, stretching the left hand as far over as we can, coming up slowly, bringing the left hand over the ear, bringing the right hand, I'm sorry, the left hand um, on the block and the right hand over the ear. So we're just gonna go back and forth and you can go ahead and come into this and just go as slowly as you want to. So the inhale is going to be with the right hand over the, the right, the ear. That's the inhale. And then exhale is with the left hand over the, the ear. All right. So as you do this, I want you to remember if you ever did this, doing cartwheels in a field. I've been surveying my customer, my students to find out how many of them did cartwheels in a field. <laughs> Not as many as I would have thought, but it's so fun to at least pretend like we did as we do this little movement. And again, the slower you go, the more you're using your core strength and you can really stretch through the side ribs here. All right, let's do one more in each direction. All right, whenever you're done with your last one, we're gonna come down to the side plank and we're gonna stay here for 20 seconds. All right, so you can change the variation if you wanna make it a little bit harder, you can bring the bottom leg out. That's totally optional if you wanted to do that. Otherwise, we can just stay in this Side of plank variation for 20 seconds. All right, so pick your variation and let's start right now. So we're gonna breathe in and out through the nose, stretching through the left hand up into the sky. Try to slow down your breath. And three, two, one, and then come up slowly with your muscle and not momentum. Awesome. Did everyone survive? <laughs> All right, great. So we're gonna bring this left leg in slowly. I'm so glad everyone is not just jumping. Let's bring the left leg in slowly using muscle. It's a balancing act. Okay, great. And now let's set up our blocks to do the other side. So I really like this right block to be on the high and then the left side will be on the low. We'll take the right leg out the blade parallel with the mat or the corner, the side. And then once you have that, we will come up and then let's exhale down. So bring the left hand to the block and then inhale coming up into our gate pose. All right, move as slowly as you feel is right for you. and recapture that joy. We have two days left before autumn is here. Rejoy of summer, the movement of dancing in a field, doing cartwheels. Maybe you can do a little smile. All right, let's do one more in each direction. Enjoy the movement. All right, and then when you're done with your last one, come on down into your side plank. So choose your variation. You can have it just in the variation that we've been doing, or you can extend your left, your left leg out 
if you want to do that. So we're going to stay for 20 seconds and starting right now. So breathe through the nose, in and out through the nose. They actually train Olympic athletes to breathe through the nose even when they are going hardcore. And it's really great for performance. Three, two, one, and come up. All right, let's bring this right leg in slowly using muscle and not momentum. Okay, woo, great. Is everyone having fun yet? <laughs> Don't worry, because we're gonna have so much fun. Okay, let's take the blanket out from our mat and we're gonna come out to stand so you can move your blocks and things out of the way. And come on to stand. Make sure your, your belt is nearby. Whew. All right, so we're gonna to come to stand and let's just take our time because changing states from the ground to standing is actually a really big deal. And let's not, let's not rush it. Let's take our time. And whenever we are ready, let's come into Dasana. So let's start off by looking at our feet. Remember how we took our eyes and started playing with the gaze? The gaze is really, really important. So let's take our eyes and look at our feet. And let's wiggle the toes, making sure the toes are nice and free. And then make sure that the feet are right underneath the hips. So once the feet are under the hips, Look at the whole feet, foot, and we're going to grow roots. We're going to grow little roots into the ground. So it's going to give us a lot of stability. So let's press the big ball toe side of the foot into the ground, and then let's press the blade of the foot into the ground, and let's pr press the inside of the heel, and then the outside of the heel, and then try to press all of those four corners with keeping the toes free. Then let's micro bend the knees. And now let's check our pelvis. So we can put our hands on the front and back of our pelvis. And let's try various pelvis techniques. So pushing the tailbone under. So that's tucking the tailbone. And then let's bring the tailbone out, uh, untucking. And now let's try to bring it neutral. So you can play back and forth and just find where is neutral. Sometimes it's, we all have these habits and it's really hard sometimes to actually feel what, what is a neutral pelvis. And then let's bring our shoulders right over the hips. And once we have ourselves all lined up, we can drop the hands and we just close our eyes, feeling ourselves to be a strong, beautiful mountain. softly open the eyes we're gonna be doing a little bit of fun things now I hope everyone's everyone signed up for fun today so I hope you remember that uh, that signature that you gave at the beginning all right so we're gonna start freeing our hips so remember how we did the little figure eights at the top we're gonna to do that standing so let's start off it doesn't really matter which way you're going clockwise or counterclockwise in fact it might be just so completely con confusing to even figure out what that is so let's just go around. So pick a direction. We're gonna make a figure eight. So let's bring our breathing in. Whenever we're moving forward, we inhale. Whenever we're moving back, we exhale. You can even look at your hips as you move them. So my legs are farther right now than my um, my hips. They're wider. And you can also bend your knees a little bit as you do this. So just play around with it. Have a little fun. That's why I wear a skirt today. Okay, let's reverse. And if it, you're like, I don't even know, I didn't even know which way I was going, I don't know how to reverse, that's okay. Just, just keep having fun with it, okay? So just try to breathe in when you're coming forward, exhale out, out back. Okay. 
Okay, let's just do one more. Okay, let's stand into Dasana, so bring the feet back under the hips and close the eyes. Now, if closing the eyes is too challenging for your balance, you can keep the eyes open. But otherwise, you can close them, feel your heart beating. All right, softly open the eyes. All right, so more dance moves. So we're gonna now take our weight onto the left foot and bring the right toes around and touch a spot and then bring the toes around and touch the same spot. So if you have a wall or you can use your chair for balance. So let me show you from this side. So I'm touching a spot and then I'm reaching the, the leg all the way around in a circle and touching a spot. So you can look down and see, and by the way, you definitely have a wall nearby if, if possible. See if you can touch the same spot. It's, it's very, very challenging. So inhaling whenever you're coming forward and then exhale when you bring the leg back. Again, try to bring a little smile. <laughs> Pretend like you're in a dance class. So what is this that we're doing? We are multitasking. So the standing leg is getting stronger, just like if we were in a tree pose. The balance is being constantly challenged because we're shifting our weight. Then we're also opening the hips. So all this rotation is moving blood circulating in the hips, loosening the flesh. So it's yoga multitasking, which is one of my favorite things. All right, just one more. So finish up the last one and then we'll come to stand. You can shake it out, do a little shake. You can twist the hips a little bit. All right, once you've shaken it out, let's go ahead and just stand. You can close the eyes, stand into Dasana. Feel your feet growing little roots into the ground, micro bend the knee, knees, bring the pelvis into neutral. Close your eyes and feel your heart beating. All right, so hopefully open the eyes. Now we're gonna do the other side. So we were just doing the left leg. And now we're gonna bring the weight onto the right. So take a look at the, at the ground. And again, you can use the wall or your chair if you need extra help with balance. Touch the left foot to one spot and see if you can touch the left foot to the same spot, okay? It may be impossible, it may just be a dream, but that's kind of, to get the most rotation in the hip, that would be, what you're trying to do. Okay, so inhaling whenever you're bringing the leg around the front, exhale when you're coming around the back. And there's no need to rush. It's not a race. No prizes will be given. And if you feel the standing leg hip really working there, that's because it is. All right, let's do one more. And the more you wobble, the more strong you're gonna get. Okay, great. Come stand, let's shake it out, do a little dance. Okay, great. How's everyone doing? Okay, get some thumbs up. Are people okay? People having fun? <laughs> okay, great, wonderful. All right, we're going to now have the most fun ever, okay? <laughs> so remember preschool? Does anyone remember preschool? Okay, Itsy Bitsy Spider. Itsy, we're gonna do Itsy Bitsy Spider, I know. It's completely crazy, <clears throat> but trust me, it's really, really fun. And it works on neuroplasticity because you haven't done this since you were like four. Okay, so neuro <laughs> itsy bitsy spider is your forefinger touching your thumb 
on both sides and it goes back and forth, okay? So just do that a few times. Does anyone remember this? <laughs> yeah, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to do Itsy Bitsy Spider. So we're gonna start off by our thighs <clears throat> and we're gonna do Itsy Spider, sniff, coming all the way up and then we're gonna look at one of our hands, pick one hand and then we're gonna exhale through the nose coming down with little raindrops. Okay, then we're gonna come all the way back to the thighs. We're gonna to touch forefinger to thumb. Sniff, sniff. Stretching all the way up. And then look at the other hand, raining down. Okay, so we're gonna go like that. I'm gonna come down just so you can see the whole thing because I think my hands are disappearing. alternating which hand is raining down. I mean, we're looking at, so we're going back and forth and it's a little bit more challenging than you'd imagine. You also have to remember which hand you looked at last time. And I'm like making a little sighing noise on the exhale because it's just, it's a little bit fun. All right, let's do one more in each hand. All right, last one. All right, let's just stand to Dasana. So let's root, plant our little feet into the ground, close our eyes, feel ourselves a beautiful mountain. All right, all excellent. So we have been working towards something which you may have guessed or may not have. So today the chair is an option. We're gonna work on dancer, dancer pose, but I'm gonna give you options. So if you don't have a chair, you know, that's okay, but the chair is an option. So let me show you what regular regular dancer looks like. <clears throat> so regular dancer is a balanced pose, just like tree, <clears throat> garudasana, etc. So what it looks like is one leg we're standing on, the, the other leg we've caught and we stretch out, okay? But there's lots of modifications. So let me show you the modification with the chair. So what I, I've discovered or studied <laughs> is that you can bring the, the knee to the chair and then reach forward. So depending on the height of your chair, my knee is bent and that's, that's fine, okay? Um, another modification is you can put your hand on a wall, okay? So that's another modification. Another way you could do it is you also put your hand on the chair. So you can play around and figure out which one you want. Let me talk about how to use the strap in all this. So what we wanna do is capture the ankle in the strap and then you can use the strap with the wall modification, with the knee on the chair modification, and also with the hand on the chair. Okay, so I've given you like 20 different options. You can also like combine <laughs> multiple options and decide. I just want everyone to feel really safe while we're doing this because it's a beautiful psoas opener and a balanced pose. So everyone sort of figure out which option is right for you. Whew, and then we're gonna try it. So 
We're, we'll stay in it in a whole minute, so make sure you're gonna feel really confident and strong. All right, looks like everyone's ready. So I'm gonna try this knee on the chair option without the strap. All right, so let's stay. Everyone, everyone come in. So if the knee is bent, that's okay. It's not like the perfect dancer pose, but that's, that's gonna be okay for today. So stretch through the hand. I'm on my right foot. I don't think, I don't know if everyone's on the same foot. It's okay, don't worry about it. Just make note. And so stretch through the right hand. The hips are, are not gonna be perfectly even in this one. If I was up completely stretched out, then it would be a little different. So the left leg or the hand that's, the, the foot that's in the hand is pushing into the hand. So there's resistance there and that's gonna open up that psoas. So stretch through the hand, push the foot in to either the strap or the hand. All right, we're only, we only have a few more seconds here. So breathe through the nose, feel your heart beating. All right, five, four, three, two, and one, and come on out, come out slowly. You can either take the foot out of the strap or off the chair. Oh my goodness, I'm sweating. <laughs> All right, let me just check, did everyone survive? Did everyone find a modification that worked for them? <laughs> okay, it looks like most people survived. Whew, look at me, I'm like so red. Okay, great. So let's just stand in Tadasana, feel the difference on our sides. So staying in a, a pose like that is a long time. It's really, really building the strength. So let's close our eyes and just feel our heart beating. All right, let's open our eyes and let's pick the modification. So you may have learned something from that previous modification that you're like, wow, I needed to do something different. So use that wisdom that you gained from the other, from the first side to do the other side. So I'm not going to try to use the knee on the chair. I'm just going to be standing. So that's my, my, my uh, decision. So let's all stand on the leg, the other side leg, and then lift up the leg, either capture it with the strap and then come bringing the other arm out, push the captured lay into the hand and we're gonna stay here for a whole minute. So try to make sure you're comfortable. And of course, if you have to come out, that's fine. So things to check as we're standing here, make sure that you're not overextending the standing leg. So micro bend that knee and breathe through the nose. You can play with your balance, either leaning more forward or up if it's a little bit too much. Don't worry, we're all in this together. So if this is just really, really challenging, you're not alone. All right, we're almost there. Try to push a little further. All right, five, four, three, two, and one, and come out with grace. Whew, you made it. <laughs> Well, it happened. We were just having so much fun and then everything went crazy. Okay, let's do a little dance to celebrate the rain. Oh, oh man. Okay, shake it out, shake it out. Okay, so let's stand into Dasana again. Integrate that work. You can close your eyes, micro bend the knees, feel your feet growing into the ground, feel your heart beating. <sighs> So softly open the eyes. So we're gonna come back down to the ground so you can, if you had moved props around or moved your chair, you go ahead and fix that. We're gonna come down and do some twists or do a twist. 
so <sighs> come on down <sighs> yes so nice so someone told me the other day that the twist was was magical for them which was really exciting so let's talk about options you can sit on your blanket we're going to take our legs out both of them and then we'll bring the right heel in next to the left hip you can leave the leg out or bring the left heel in next to the right hip sit up tall pressing both of your sits bones edge of the ground you can wiggle trying to get grounded growing little roots <laughs> into the ground <sighs> and then let's take the left elbow to the right knee taking the right hand behind so kind of like just spinning and bringing the belly button so the belly button is we're really trying to move the belly button towards the right once you get your hand on the ground press into the ground firmly doing a little inhale here so we're going to do 10 breaths and every breath we want to turn a little bit deeper and then every exhale we just loosen a tiny little bit okay so we're going to be trying to move towards the right pushing to the ground growing our head towards the sky our sits bones into the ground so 10 breaths let's go All right, this is nine. And then our 10th, let's make the biggest breath of the year and hold for three seconds at the top. Hmm. All right, let's rotate only the top of the body. So we're gonna take the top of the body and we're gonna rotate and we're gonna do a little counter twist, bringing the left hand behind us, press into the ground. You can set the right elbow on the knee and let's turn to the left and just do a little five count counter twist so inhaling for five hmm. five breaths and our fifth breath let's hold for three hmm. all right so we're unfurl first the top of our body then let's bring the legs out shake the legs shake the upper body Whew. all right now let's do the other side so we will bring the left heel next to the right hip and you can leave this right leg out or you can bring the right heel in. Then we're going to set the left hand behind us, hooking the right elbow onto the knee. So we're going to do 10 breaths in each breath. I want you to be turning to the left a little bit deeper inhale um, and then exhale lo loosen feeling that the belly button itself is trying to turn root through your sits bones, grow through your head crown of your head let's do 10 breaths all right this is our ninth breath and our 10th breath biggest breath of the year Hold for three. So only unfurl the top of the body. Let's immediately turn to the right, hooking the left elbow, bringing the right hand behind us. Just a little five breath counter twist. And five, let's hold for three. All right, shake out the legs, unfurl the top of the body, Oh, wow. All right. So we're going to do a little happy baby. And so come on down. You can clear your mat of any blankets, or pillows, props, anything else that has accumulated dust, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so come on down. And once you're down, then you can bring your feet up and grab the outsides of the blades of the foot. And we shall do a little bit of rocking back and forth and just enjoy the happy baby.
You can take some longer, deeper breaths. <sighs> Sigh it out. <sighs> you can bring your feet more mid-body to do a lumbar massage. You can bring your feet overhead or towards your face and do a little upper body, upper back massage. So just use your feet to massage whichever part of your back needs it the most right now. One day I'm going to do a only happy baby class, all right? Let me know if you'll go. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and do some rocking. So you can touch your toes in front of you and then rock behind. Your toes may not touch behind, but go ahead and pretend like they will. All right, we're gonna do one more fun little pose a butterfly. So come on and sit in the middle of your mat and then take your block and put it between your feet and let's squeeze our block. Squeeze our block and this is going to release the inner thighs. Just feel a little bit of release. So the more you squeeze the block, the more of an isometric opening you're going to get in those inner thighs. I love isometric work. It's like magic to me. All right, let's squeeze for one more breath. And then let's take the block out, bring the feet together, and see if you have just gotten a few more inches of space. And then we're gonna fly, okay. Everyone fly your butterfly. This is our last little capturing of joy. Two days, two days before uh, autumn, autumn equinox. So our little butterfly has to fly through the rain. I heard someone told me in class the other day that butterflies don't like rain, but we're gonna, this is a butterfly that likes rain, okay? All right, oh yes, everyone's looking so graceful. Beautiful, graceful butterflies, ah, oh, lovely. All right, let's go ahead and stretch out the legs. So if you have your chair and want to, we can do a little um, legs up to chair. If you don't have a chair, you can just come into a Shavasana shape, just lie flat. And we're gonna do a little bit of breath work before we finish class. We're just gonna do a little box breath, which I just think is so, so lovely. So if you wanna use your chair for your Shavasana, it's, it's totally, um, totally an option, which I personally love putting my legs in the chair. <sighs> so come on into whatever Shavasana shape you want. And we're gonna do a four count box breath. So a four count box breath is, if you haven't done it before, it's in for four. Hold for four. One, two, three, four, five, out for four and then hold out for four. One, two, three, four. And you just go at your own pace and go ahead and start. Just make sure you're feeling very comfy. And if at ever, whenever you're doing any breath, it feels just like a little bit too much, you can always back out and just breathe normally.
So we have one more minute for our box breath. So see if you can slow it down a little bit more. Make it a little more um, slow and steady. And go ahead and finish up your last round. And when you finish, you can either stay on your chair or you can push yourself off your chair for your last few minutes of Shavasana. Just resting, feeling your body grow little roots into the ground wherever you feel gravity touching your body. So I have a little poem for you called Rain Dance that I just think is so cute. It's called Rain Dance Poem by Victoria Ramo. When a poem is born, what is the chance of words and rain drip drop dance? Ping ting sing, pitter patter rhyme, Rain dance acceleration makes my poem climb. Dribble, drench, drizzle, think on a fence. Sprinkle, splish, splash, bring balance to my sense. From sweaty sobs and sorrow, storm, surge, stream. Murky, thunderous, blurry, cry, rage, scream. To cleanse and quenched, shower, spray, stream. Calm, cool, clear, now my mind is pristine. The earth is now drenched, it grew a poet tree. Thoughts and water percolate, and now it sprouted leaves. So that's a little poem called Rain Dance that I hope you enjoy. So let's start to bring some life back to our body. Let's wiggle our toes and our fingers like they're little drips in a puddle. And then let's push ourselves off of our chair if we're still on it, or push the chair out of the way and roll off the chair or some combination. Come on down and just oh, let's stretch our arms overhead. Stretch the legs. And this is this is pond pose. And you can feel like your whole belly is like a pond full of little fishes and wildlife, frogs, tadpoles, crabs maybe, 
I don't know. All right. And then slowly roll over to your side when you're ready. And then you can come on up to sit. Whew. And let's just take a moment to close our eyes and check in with how we're feeling. So our yoga is an experiment. <sighs> how are we feeling compared to the beginning of class? And let's, set, let's, let's remember our intention. And let's bring the hands together. And let's do three alms together. Om. Inhale. Om. And the third one, really feel yourself vibrate. Om. The benefits of this practice benefit you and all creatures everywhere. Namaste. All right. Well, I would love to hear how people feel about the class.